Alexi, you've all, you're all set up. You have your child theme, but how do you edit it to make it meaningful, to make it do anything? Well, here I have my page. I'm going to go actually visit the page because we want to see what's going on. And I've made some changes here already. I'm going to comment them out and show you what I've done. But when we're done, I've changed the colors of my links here. I have not changed the lower level links. I will leave that to you to figure out and finish. Um, I've changed this, so that my blog page goes here, my front page is here. But notice on this, I wanted my links to maintain the blue color, but I did not want them to have the blue color at the top of the page. I've made this significantly smaller so it will look better on a cell phone. And if I close this bar right here, I've changed the color of the top bar. Let's take a look at how I did this. Now there's two places to go to do this. You can go in your dashboard to appearance and editor. And you can just start typing your new CSS code in here. Please make sure to comment thoroughly whatever you do. And this works and you don't need anything particularly to edit this. Now, I am working in Dreamweaver and I like that better just because the colors are easier for me to see. So these are the changes that I've made. And I'm actually going to just expand these comments here. Now you'll notice I'm putting a comment before each set of changes. This one applies to both of those because they changed the regular link and the hover color on the link. Ooh, and I've got to actually put another comment right here to make that one go away. And we got to get rid of that for a second. Okay, so now everything's commented out. Now if I save this and choose File, Save All, I have some other things I was just flipping through here, but all we're going to work with today is the style CSS. So this is what we're going to go do. We're going to go back and forth between the changes that I've made and the site. So right now this is the site with my changes. And if I refresh the site, which it just did, it puts it all back the way it was. So I'm going to show you how I figured out what to change. Now this top bar is actually an image and I'm using Chrome. So I'm going to choose Inspect Element and Chrome is really awesome for this. Uh, Firefox has good tools too, but I'm trying to learn to use the Chrome ones because they're supposed to be better. Now this is my class container and it's a background and I have to look here, it's going to, this is my background image. You can see that it's an 11 by 16 pixel image. Now I have two choices here. The easy way to do this would just be to change the image where it's at, which I don't want to do because if the parent theme for skeleton updates, it's going to write over my image. So what I want to do is I want to create a new image and I've actually done that and I have saved it inside. I've created a images folder inside my skeleton child theme. So if I look in here, you'll see I've created border top purple dot PNG. I may have closed fireworks, but I've created that. I actually created it in Photoshop, but unfortunately I think I'm registered to fireworks in here because I used to use that a lot. So I'll come back to that in a second, but it gives us, uh, here we go. And on this, you typically want to work in a much brighter view. So I have my nice, clean colors in Firefox. And you can see that these are fairly simple. I just have blue and purple in here, or red and purple in here. So 
the code that made that work is this line right here. I've changed the body background image to images, border, top, purple, PNG. And since this images folder is down lower than my themes images folder for skeleton, it's going to look locally because this is the local CSS file. So I changed it and put a new image in here with the new folder so that it will work with my theme. And I, if I want to test that, I'm going to choose Save All. And I'm going to refresh this. And you'll see this will change to purple and red. And there we go. I won't say it's a great border, but it is a changed border. If you're an artist, you can probably do better than me. The next thing I don't like is how big this font is. And if I, again, inspect the element, you're going to see that this is my title. And these are the styles that are applying to it. And it's inheriting these. So really what I'm looking for is where is it changing sizes and what size is it? Ah, this is my H1 site title. And its font size is 3.5M. And I don't need to worry about changing any of the others. I'm actually good with the rest of that. So in Dreamweaver, I wanted to, and it, you'll notice I've got my comments here saying that the old size was 3.5M. And I just changed the H1 site title font size to 2M. I didn't want to change anything else. This is overriding that size, so I didn't need to change any of the other code that went with it. And when I save all on that, and come back in here and hit refresh. It's a much more or manageable size that should look significantly better on a cell phone. So if it shrinks, it may wrap because of this one here. I could get rid of that, but it looks better. Now, the last thing I changed here, and I want you guys to go ahead and figure out how to change the color of the drop down comments, but I changed both the mouse over and the regular color for your button. So I'm going to go ahead and inspect the element. And again, I'm going to look and see where my colors are. And there we go, um, except these are all in the navigation bar. So I want to look for navigation. Here we go. It's my navigation ULLI hover anchor. And so I changed that. I actually changed it a little bit. There we go. This is the one that I changed. So you can go through and change it the same way. And then you're going to have to figure out how to find and change the other one. So what we're doing is we're overriding them. Since our CSS file is closer to the user interface than the parent CSS file, it's going to override anything we put in. So I wanted that to have purple and red colors. Save all. And I'm going to refresh. OK, now let's say I want to change the color here on this heading. Let me show you through the process how I figure this out. So this is front page. I'm going to choose Inspect Element. You make sure it's saying front page. This is just a simple H2 element. So all I want to change here is the color on the H2. So in my Dreamweaver file, I'm going to just type in H2, and I'm going to type in color. And I could select, but I actually want to pull the red color for my, because it's a good idea to use the same codes the whole way through. And again, you should put in comments for everything that you do. It doesn't need an L. And if it's unique, where I'm not working with two parts of the navigation, changing H2 to red. I will be looking 
for comments because you have to self-document. You have to. You've got to know what you're doing here. And then file, save all. And I didn't test this before the video, so crossing my fingers, hitting refresh, and it worked. So obviously this is an H2 and this is not. So if I wanted to change that one, I'd have to do it for H3. In any case, you get the idea. I want you to change the H3 level. I want you to find and change the gray text for these sub menus. In the next video, I'll show you how to take them from your local computer up to your live website so that once you've tested it, you can keep going.